Hi, my name is Anish Kadakia. I'm one of the design surgeons along with Dr. Bruce Saran for the Acumet Ankle Plating System 3. We have some general design features that we've incorporated into the plates to make the entire set more soft tissue friendly. Distally, all of the plates have a slightly thinner design to minimize soft tissue irritation. There's a locking cluster of 2.7 millimeter screws distally, while approximately you have 3.5 millimeter screw options, both locking and non-locking. Each plate has been anatomically designed for the fibula, posterior tibia, the medial malleolus, and small avulsion fractures of both the fibula and the medial malleolus. To help familiarize you with the exposure that are required for the posterior lateral and posterior medial uh, malleolar fractures, we're going to go into the lab and demonstrate the different approaches, both posterior and supine, uh, to approach these difficult fractures and to familiarize yourself with the exposures. Thank you. Our goal today is to demonstrate the posterior medial and posterior lateral approach to the ankle for the posterior malleolar fractures and what we call the posterior feline variant to exemplify what the plates can, how they fit and how they can help you perform these cases much more easier than a standard one-third tubular, one-quarter tubular set. They have been designed anatomically and they can be done for multiple approaches. In this particular segment, we're going to demonstrate how you can do a prone approach and a posterior medial and a posterior lateral to put both the posterior medial plate and the posterior lateral plate in. And uh, as I've described before, you can put the posterior medial plate through the posterior lateral approach. However, in some cases that could be difficult, and so we'll also show you an accessory posterior medial approach as well. So if we're going to start off with the posterior medial approach, just because it's, I think, something that most of us are going to want to do. I think the hesitancy with the posterior medial approach is the neurovascular bundle. What I want to demonstrate is that you really don't have to get into that. If you see here, I'm going to diagram out the distal tibia. You see our contours, and I think we all know this anatomy. Immediately adjacent to the posterior tibia is the posterior tibial tendon. Now this approach is done immediately adjacent to the posterior border of the tibia. And that keeps you out of the neurovascular bundle. There's really no stress, and it's a very easy approach to make of a prone position. So when I like to make my incision, I go between the posterior tibial tendon and the posterior border of the tibia. And you can make this incision as long as you want, but it really doesn't have to be that long because this fracture is typically quite short. The key is not to dive too deep because you do not want to lacerate the posterior tibial tendon. Once you cut down, you're going to go right into that posterior tibial tendon sheet. So we can see here, I've incised the posterior tibial tendon sheet. Ideally, you're going to want to close this at the end of the case to minimize the risk of subluxation, and that's quite rare in this case because they have so much scarring. But you would want to close this. And there's the posterior tibial tendon. We can identify that right here. You can see the tendon right here. The nice thing is now, if you just take this laterally, you're going to be in that posterior tibial groove. So if I put juncture retraction on the tendon, you can see you can see the whole posterior medial tibia very, very easily without any issue. And if you need to dissect, you can dissect even further across, but that's typically not necessary to do so in this particular case. But I've, I've seen that done where you can take a channel or a cob, whatever you want to use. You do have to incise the periosteum. That's something that I think is very important when you look at posterior tibial fractures, the posterior malleolar fractures, the periosteum is quite thick. You incise the periosteum, just be careful because you don't want to injure the nerve. You can get a much larger exposure across the entire tibia, and I'll demonstrate that here more clearly with once I get the Army Navy inside.
And you can see here, it's the post entire posterior team is exposed without really any risk of getting into the neurovascular bundle. So here's the posterior medial tibia. The plate, which I'll demonstrate in a minute, and the other cadaver goes right on this posterior tibial border. And the plate will fit within this tibial group. It's been designed for these posterior P-line variant fractures we've described to sit right within the groove and you can easily play without having to worry about the neurovascular bundle at all. And the posterior tibial tendon will sit nicely back in the groove and then during closure, you can easily close the posterior tibial tendon sheet to decrease the risk of subluxation. And that's the easiest way to get to the posterior medial approach or the posterior malleolar fracture.